about now, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Brown incarceration, got my people living daily. Gang wars back to back to the homies. Yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one live, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, you seen the thumbnail, let's get right into the damn video, bro. With that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up, and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel. Check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time, but most importantly, thank you guys for your guys' support. Now, I want to explain it like this. I'm going to tell you about the article in which one of my, my, one of my subscribers provided for me, and I talked to quite a few subscribers about it. And this is what I've gathered. The Mexican Mafia in itself is its own entity. It's its own organization. It's a powerhouse. They have a lot of control in the states and in the feds. I'm not sure which side is more stronger than the others or which one's more powerful than the other. But they're a force to be reckoned with. And I tell you that because honestly, my perception is this. They're nothing but freelancers and mercenaries. In this particular situation, it was the leader of the uh, Gulf Cartel. Los Cetas. He got transferred to ADX September 2019. He arrived there, and then all of a sudden, El Chapo arrives there. But El Chapo Guzman didn't have nothing to do with this one. This one, he landed in a cell with a Sureño named Francisco Garcia. And the Mexican mafia right there said, you know what, we're going to extort this man. And they told this dude he needed to pay up $10,000, saying it was equivalent to 200,000 pesos. I don't know. Can you live? Can you live a good life with two hundred thousand pesos? Cause, you know, to if if it's two hundred thousand pesos and it's ten thousand dollars, then you know, in the United States, that goes for that goes that doesn't go that far. But in Mexico, everybody keeps saying you go down there with ten thousand, you'll be a king. But I kind of doubt that. But he refused to pay the ten thousand dollars. He said, "Hell nah, bro. Give a damn who you guys are. I'm a leader. I'm a leader of my own cartel. I'm bigger than you guys. I'm bigger than the Mexican mafia. We are the Mexican mafia." And that's true in a sense. They are the real Mexican mafia. But sure enough, the Sureño that was in the cell came from behind, put tips on him, beat him, beat him bad. And they said that this, this, this dude gave him a kick to the head that was disgusting. That a kick that he should have died from. But he didn't. He lived. The Mexican mafia that ordered this hit was Richard Santiago. They didn't provide his nickname, so I'm not, I didn't even bother to go look it up. They had camera footage of two individuals walking up to this dude's cell, talking to him prior. They can't hear the audio and the conversation of what was really taking place. But either way, he didn't want to pay up that 10 grand, which I'm pretty sure he had. But then again, Los Setas, I'm, I heard they're, they're divided up into new groups. They have the old school, which is it's called in Spanish, and they have this other group. I don't know if they're, they work together or they're, just two, they're, they're their own two factions. I don't know too much about Los Setas other than the dangerous stories that I heard about him on YouTube and in, in prison. So he didn't pay up. He, he refused to get extorted by these guys because he probably thought of them like they're lesser than. And he was a boss still. So they beat him and he almost lost his life. That man's getting released in 2024. And he and it's shown and documented that he never cooperated with authorities. So they don't know what's going to happen to him when he gets out. And like They're going to be after this man regardless. Other cartel members, other cartels, period. And now the Mexican Mafia, he done, he, done, he, done, he done pissed off the Mexican Mafia. They needed that 10 grand. Not that they really needed it, but they wanted that 10 grand. So to me, that's a bold move. You know, I was always told that, you know, Mexican Mafia, when they're on the other side of the border in Mexico, that their power is limited, that they work for the, for the drug cartels. That the, this whole alliance and them working for the drug cartels is, you know, obviously to put money in their pockets to get a hold of the drug trade because they can make it back to the United States. A lot of Southsiders do get deported and go to Tijuana and a lot of other uh, little small regions. And obviously when these Mexican mafia members go out there, these Southsiders still answer, bro. There ain't no, they, there ain't no boundaries, bro. You're, it doesn't matter if you don't have a passport to the United States, bro. You're going to work for us still. You know, it never stops. It keeps going. No matter where you're at, no matter what border you're at, it keeps going. So these Southsiders still work for these Mexican mafia members. And that's how it all happened. But we all know history from back in the day. And this is why I call them freelancers and mercenaries. Because we all know the story about David Barron, Popeye, how he got connected to the, to the Felix brothers. 
when Al Chapo tried to ambush the brothers and he shot one of the shooters and then got the brothers out of there, they were winning big. Then he brought Bad into the mix and they were utilizing uh, Sureños from uh, San Diego to do hits on the other side of the border then come back and utilizing the Southsiders to go do hits on the United States territory. Go like, like they needed to get hit in San Diego or somewhere in that area. So they, and then they go back and that's how I was working until, you know, Al Chapo made his power move and then, you know, the Phoenix brothers wound up disappearing and, you know, then you know the story. That was over with. Then later on, you got Tablas and his, and his neighborhood, Florencia. They, get, they click up with the Sinaloa cartel. Then they wind up getting indicted. Then what happens next? Fox, Mike Bubu, and another Mexican mafia member link up with the uh, Familia Michoacan. The Knights Templar, or uh, Templarios Caballeros, or Caballeros Templarios, you know, La Tutu y La Barbie. What kind of name is that, bro? The Barbie. Anyways, and what's crazy is that the, the, the aspect that I heard was that, uh, that they actually wanted the Mexican Mafia to make one of their own members. And it was like they wanted to have a power seat in the Mexican Mafia so they don't get burned so they have an individual who can control certain situations when it comes to the large amounts of money, the large amounts of dope that were crossing the border through the Mexican mafia and their soldiers. That's pretty much what they wanted it for. But I'm not sure if it happened because, you know, obviously we know the Caballeros Templarios, they went down. But that just goes to show they can work for whoever they want to work for. They could do whatever they want to do. One minute they're working for the Mexican drug cartel, doing all the legwork. Next thing you know, they're in. ADX booking a, a drug cartel. They don't care. And that's what makes me perceive them as they're their own entity. I think they're going to become real big. I mean, it takes time. They got control of a lot of the penal systems. They're branching now. You have a lot of Sudanian varios just coming out of the, everywhere. Northern California, Washington, you know, all the different states. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with. There's going to be a lot of people getting hurt in the process because we know how they play dirty politics. We know how they're willing to take out their own brothers. And we know how they're, these brothers, these so-called these so carnales, they'll fight for each other's territory. Why, why share territories or why split territories when I can have it all type mentality? So there are, they're already making power moves, as you can see all through, uh, throughout YouTube. They're already making power moves on one another, getting greedy. Loyalty and respect, that's a temporary time. It only lasts for so long. Money, power, and respect goes a lot farther with these guys. So you got to admit, knocking this dude down and trying to get 10000 out of him, which I'm pretty sure the Mexican Mafia don't need in the feds, period. But they wanted it anyways. They wanted to show their hand. They wanted to force it. And they wanted to show everybody that, you know, they're above everybody else. In the same fashion, when they go to uh, across the border and the Mexican drug cartels look at them like, bro, you work for us, bro. Well, no, we the mafiosos. The, and they're saying, and the, and the Mexican mafia mentality, they're thinking the same thing. Nah, bro, we're the mafiosos. We do what we want. We work for who we want to work for. Can nobody tell us what to do? We are our own organization. And I think that's what makes them powerful. But a simple fact, they can say, you know, this cartel, I'm going to work with this cartel. I'm going to work with this cartel. Then I'm going to establish something later over here. And they wind up, during that whole process, when, uh, when Fox and everybody got indicted, there's an actual article, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into on a later date, it was an MS-13 that helped solidify and stronger, strong ties because he got deported to Tijuana after he got out the feds. And he was like pretty much like a secretary for Fox. So to me, they, that, that, they have the upper hand because they're on both sides. There's, already, there's even a couple of prisons in Mexico that they actually run, that they're in control of, that belongs to them. Not all of them. Most of the prisons in Mexico usually are controlled by the cartels in whatever region it's in. These guys that have the ability and the manpower to get back and forth on that border. And most of the time, the areas in which they control are close to that border. Where it makes it that much easier. They're the ones that get the dope before anybody. And now they have, they have a slight control of the MS-13 in LA to actually get deported in El Salvador to end up landing in Tijuana and then getting smuggled back into the country. They got twice the manpower now. They got Sureños and MS-13. They only got the loyalty of the MS-13 that are in Cali, though. And I'm going to talk about that in another video because I got a crazy story to tell you about that provided by my viewers. See, the thing about it is these guys just reach as far. The black hand reaches really far. And it's, they're getting to the point. They're getting bold and arrogant like, bro, I will slap around a, a Mexican drug cartel. I don't care. 
I don't know if they would have did it if there was more more people of that dude's cartel. But like I said, they said Los Cetas ain't a big thing no more. There's these new cartels that took it over and they came up. And so Los Cetas are kind of like old school back in the day. They're pretty much small like the Felix brothers. So I guess you could say it's okay for you know them to bully around a small cartel like, who really ain't got no power anymore. Who knows? I'm not too sure about that. But these individuals are getting to that point where like, man, we're getting big and we're expanding. They're going to be a big mafia. Can, you, can we say that they're going to be as big as the Italians? Because these dudes, think about it. El Familia Michoacan was giving these dudes large amounts of money plus large amounts of product to bring in. And a lot of that money, like 50, 60,000, was getting set to the state brothers. Never mind the 300 some thousand that some of these Mexican mafia members make in LA County jail by themselves. These individuals got a hold of a lot of money. Their casitas that they got, they've been getting indicted for. I read an article. They were making that eighty thousand a month, but that month, that nu- they said that number has lowered now in the last past few years. But still, they got control of a lot. They're generating a lot of revenue, and that's what makes a mafia a strong, powerful organization. So let me know what you guys think about this video, man. Uh, I would like to hear you guys' input. Do you think that was a bold move? Them beating up the the the, the drug cartel and like damn near almost taking his life. Do you really think they can become their own cartel? Because they are their own mafia. I still think they have a long ways to go, but we know the direction that they're headed. Right now, this new generation is taking out the old, and this new generation is going to make the same power moves, if not better ones, like the old generation did. So you're going to start seeing a lot more a lot more dirty politics. That's all I can say, a lot more dirty politics. So let's let everybody just be careful. So all the youth out there, just know what's coming. There's a big storm coming. These individuals are very powerful. They're not worried about the people that's working for them. You know, they come and they go. So, uh, Sureños and camaradas, they come and go. They're always going to have manpower that's going to look up to them. They're always going to have manpower that's willing to sacrifice it all and work for them. Right now, they're always going to continue. No matter, these indictments don't stop them from doing nothing. They're going to do what they want to do. They're going to plan things out. If they can get this far and this big from just being behind the penal system, some of these dudes do parole. And that's why I say they're going to be a powerful, and that's why I say they've always been a powerful organization, but I think they're going to become more powerful throughout time, especially now that they're all on the lines. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When we got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.